In this video, I'm going to have a look at the differences between standard SQL and Microsoft's T-SQL. So what is SQL? Well, structured query language was first created in the 1970s. In the 1980s, different companies started creating their own SQL variants, and these versions varied from the originals in different ways. So to counter this separation, in the mid-1980s, two organizations, ISO and ANSI, A-N-S-I, published their SQL standards. This meant that others could use it as a starting point for their version. In this article, I will be referring to the ISO ANSI versions as standard SQL. Some of the major modern dialects of SQL include Oracle SQL, PL SQL, which is an extension of Oracle SQL, and Microsoft's version, TSQL, or Transact SQL. None of these dialects implement the ISO ANSI SQL language in full. Different vendors have different ideas for what they want. They may not want to use all of the features from standard SQL, or they may want to incorporate their own ideas. So while there are some vendors which get fairly close, there is no implementation of the full standard SQL language. But then it's more of a concept than an actual implemented language. Similarly, there's no such thing in the world as English. Instead, there are dialects, British English, American English. Now, there are some institutions that may attempt to regulate their English dialect, but dialects develop as actual usage varies due to changing circumstances. This is the same with standard SQL, which varies every few years. And interestingly, standard SQL does not replicate exactly the standard that its creator, Cobb, came up with. For example, set theory uses records and fields. Standard SQL, rows and columns. So even the SQL standard is not a perfect implementation of the original SQL theory. So what are some of the differences between standard SQL and Microsoft's extension of it? Well, let's have a look at this object. This includes a space. So it needs to be considered when I start writing my code. So let's put in this. That creates a problem. Where does the table stop and end? And if I try and execute that, I may be lucky or I may get an error. Standard SQL uses quotation marks to show where a table or view starts and ends. In TSQL, you generally use hard brackets, and you'll notice that even more if you drag the table into the query. So you can see squiggly line disappears and we can execute. Now suppose we have got hundreds of thousands of rows. We might want to limit it to the first, say, five or 10 rows. In standard SQL, you would say, fetch first 10 rows only doesn't work in TSQL. There is a variant of this. This was first introduced in SQL Server 2012. So offset zero rows, fetch first 10 rows only. However, even there, we still have to put more work in. We have to use the order by clause if we're using offset. So if I go for say business entity ID, now it works. A lot of hassle. In TSQL, the usual way of limiting the number of rows is by using the word top. This was first introduced in SQL Server in 2005. It can be used with or without brackets. Now, some variants of SQL Server also use other ways of reducing the number of rows. For example, limit 10. Next, do you need to use the from clause? Well, in standard SQL, you must use at least the select and from clauses in a select statement. So this means you can't easily get the result of a calculation which doesn't require a table such as two plus two. Oracle SQL gets around this by using a special inboat table called dual, which has one row and one column. So this would get you the answer for in Oracle SQL. In Microsoft SQL, you don't need the dual table. You can simply say, select two plus two. Now, if you turn to procedural programming, standard SQL queries data using set-based logic. For example, the totality of a table or view can be queried in one select statement, retrieving millions, billions of rows. You don't have to specify how SQL retrieves this data. TSQL includes extensions which allow you to use different ways of querying. For example, 
You could use cursors, which query the data one row at a time. You can use while loops. So then you'd be able to go into the next row of this cursor. You can also react to the retrieved data by using conditional logic, such as if else. And you can have greater transactional control for error handling. The try catch construct can intercept errors and react to them. So standard SQL is a declarative programming language. You don't describe the control flow, but the results you want. TSQL can do more. It becomes an imperative procedural programming language. It's imperative programming because it allows the user to specify the commands to be undertaken. It's a procedural language as code can be written in procedures or functions. What other differences are there? Well, TSQL functions can vary from standard SQL functions. For example, the substring function in standard SQL takes the form like this. However, in TSQL, it's a slightly different form. So in addition to this, TSQL may add additional functions. For example, there is the cast function. This transforms one field or value from one data type into another. However, if it can't be transformed, as in this case, it results in an error. In SQL Server 2012, Microsoft introduced the tricast function, which returned a null if there was an error. This made for much easier programming. There's expanded DDL statements. DDL, or data definition language, allows you to insert, update, and delete roles. Used in both standard SQL and TSQL, they are data manipulation commands. In TSQL, you can use joins in these commands, allowing you to connect tables together for these DDL commands. In standard SQL, you would have to use subqueries for this functionality. And then there are data types. SQL is a highly typed language. This means that data in columns must be of specified types, such as string, text, or date-based types. SQL, the standard version, includes a wide selection of data types, and TSQL expands on this selection. For example, the TSQL small data type, it stores date and time values to near a second in between the years 1900 and 2079. So with second accuracy, it uses only four bytes per row to store this. The standard date time data type, which is in standard SQL as well as TSQL, stores date and time to a 300th of a second within 1753 and the year 1999. However, it takes double the storage space. So if small data type gives you everything that you need, then you can save half the storage space by using it. So what conclusions can you reach? Well, firstly, SQL dialects are not identical. For example, if you have used Oracle SQL, your select statements would have to end with a semicolon. In TSQL, it's generally optional. This means that SQL statements may need modification to go from one dialect to another. However, as the different dialects are based on the same standard SQL, over 90% of the code will work without modification. If you are modifying many select statements, you may find that these modifications become repetitive. So one change will give you the basis for changing hundreds of select statements. Secondly, you can learn any of the SQL dialects with the knowledge that most of the syntax that you learn will be portable into other versions. For example, if you trained in Oracle SQL and want to use TSQL, then yes, some modifications will be necessary, but the underlying theory and most of the syntax will remain the same. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like this video and then subscribe and click on the bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll be informed of any new videos. If you would like to learn TSQL, then why not join me in my course Querying Microsoft SQL Server? In this course, we will go through TSQL in some detail, so you can take your database select statements to a whole new level. Alternatively, if you want to learn Oracle SQL, then please join me in my Oracle SQL course. Thank you very much for watching this.
and please keep learning.